What can go wrong during sex? I was suggesting that woman is on top. Oh my goodness. So you're telling me if I took finasteride, it potentially could have shrunk my penis. So you, you've held all our testes here in the same ball. I could have chased on stage. <laughs> My name is Suhail Essa. This is Dr. Inplanta Bilagati. Dr. Bishen Naidu. Dr. Brendan Matthews. This is Dr. Nassim Sharif. And this is the Gentleman's Technical Podcast. Podcast. Let's rock and roll, boys. Welcome to another episode of the Gents Clinic Podcast. Six South African male medical doctors on a mission to change the way in which we perceive men's health. I'm going to let everyone here at the table introduce themselves. I'm Dr. Nassim Sharif. Dr. Brendan Matthews. Dr. Vishen Naidu. Dr. Tlix, Vilagazi. Well, I'm I'm switching it up today. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Dr. Yeah. Suhail Essa, and this is the Gents Clinic Podcast. All right, guys. So, as always, we are going to start with interesting cases for the week. Mm. Anyone have anything? Brendan, you were telling us you had something. <clears throat> yeah. You had an interesting case for us. Yeah, man. And I hope that um, this actually becomes a topic for today mm. um, because... It's something that hit me quite, quite, quite deep, you know, uh -huh. um, when I saw when I saw this 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 patient. So basically, <laughs> bodybuilder, right? Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so looking at the two, yeah. of you, <laughs> <laughs> is it so is it the same uh, person you when we were at med school? Um, we had a no, brief discussion totally, about. No, it's totally it's totally someone different. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it seems like you always want to talk about this guy, Vish, but no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. it, it. So basically, he's a bodybuilder. You know, um, and I didn't actually have to to ask him mm -hmm. if he was a bodybuilder. I could see that. But he, was he a professional? No, 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 no. Okay. Well, I didn't get into that, but no, we don't. You guys. It's the majority uh, of guys. Okay, mm -hmm. but continue. <laughs> so basically, you know, I, was, I walked into the workplace and I saw the guy waiting for me. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that struck me was the size of his arms. But... Um, they were so artificial, you know. They were just like thin forearm, like mine, oh, thin like sure. mine, and massive bicep, yeah, yeah. and massive oh, tricep. Oh. So, so did he just train arms? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure you know. Yeah, when, no, no, I mean, I'm just thinking of, you know, these people that are always trending on, on social media. Yeah, you see guy those. Who's always you know, it's artificially massive arm, But he's like, was even massive shoulders, massive uh, lats, Massive calves, but the rest of his body was like a twig. So you can just have that picture in your mind. Yeah. 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 So anyway, he, he looked sick though, you know. He looked sick as he came into the practice. And um, when I actually sat down with him, his main complaint was that he's got like these growths, mm -hmm. you know, on, on his bum mm. and in another spot on his arm. And mm. painful. Mm. But, you know, to make a long story short, basically, he, he was using steroids, juice, you know, he was mm. using steroids, anabolic steroids, anabolic yeah. steroids for, the, for, for three years. He had been using them for three years, nonstop. Sure. Wow. Sure. So specifically, he was using testosterone um, at very high doses. So like one gram. I'm sure mm. we'll get into like different doses that he was using. Um, but that just sounded high to yeah. me. I don't know in mm. the bodybuilding world, is that a high dose as well? We have no idea what people <laughs> yeah. are taking out there. Yeah. We have no idea. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, also, you don't even know what, like, you know, what, what stuff type he's taking. Test. And, yeah. 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 You know? So he's, he, he, he was very open about it because, you know, I asked him after, within the consultation, I asked him, like, so what do you think has caused your problems? And he was like, no, I think it's my steroid use, you know. Mm. And when someone gives you what they think could have caused it, it helps you work mm. together with them. Yeah. Um, to get to the bottom of it. And he was open with me and <clears throat> told me he used like DECA, which is nandrolone, mm -hmm. and test very high doses for three years nonstop. Of which which type of testosterone was he using? I'm not sure, but injectables. Mm -hmm. Inject he was injecting. So after for after three year period, some he had like a change in his life, a big life event, and he then stopped gymming and he stopped um the testosterone. Mm. But I came to find out later the reason why his arms were so big and his shoulders because he was injecting oil into his muscles sure. as well. Mm. Sure. So he told me he was using synthol. <coughs> so I'd never sure. heard of synthol before. I checked it obviously after I consulted and it's like a oil that bodybuilders inject into. Yeah, the I've seen those videos on those people yeah. trending on like TikTok. I don't think it's Brazil, like it's massive. It seems it? like 
Every but is, <coughs> is it common in bodybuilders? That's, you were supposed to tell us. You were supposed no, to tell us in the no, world. No, 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 you don't see it. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a common. It's is not it, a common is it like a like a muscle like belly filler? In professional so, yeah. bodybuilding, I don't no, think even, it's as even, common. Even in junior, I mean, people who take that that kind of stuff, I'm sure, are just they just chance takers and yeah, because there's no strength. It doesn't help. It's just for the look, you know. And the look is also disproportional. Yes. Is it more just just like they? I mean, the assumption is that you know you have rounder muscle bellies or mm. you know where you may have a short muscle belly. But I guess it, the stuff. it will actually look nice if it's done by a professional. I think. Mm. But these guys are just doing it, and yeah. his muscles look funny, man. So even though he's really sick, this guy, he's really sick, and he looks really sick, and he's wasted. Like his muscles are small, but those parts are big, and so come to find that he has all the symptoms of low testosterone which are yeah, with all these muscles yeah oh, muscles. no well, <laughs> not real muscles you know so basically um basically he says that the first thing he said to me doc i haven't even wished for to have a woman in the past four years i could not even what because obviously i asked him about his hiv status you know and i asked when last he was at the woman and he like giggled he's like i haven't been with the woman for four years and I'm like, why Jeez. is that? And he's like, I just don't even wish. And when did he stop taking the Four test? years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sure. He doesn't even wish. He, so his libido is non-existent. Yeah. He has erectile dysfunction, which was a given. I, I didn't even have to ask him, but I still asked him. He's depressed. He feels like just low energy all yeah. the time. Yeah. You know, mm. he always sleeps. He feels hopeless, you know. Um, tired. His mm. muscles have shrunk. His balls have shrunk. That's obviously as a consequence of the long-term use of, of mm, testosterone. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Um, so he has small balls. He has some gynecomastia as well. Yeah. He was injecting synthol into his pecs as well, but what? he also has sure. gynecomastia there too. Um, and Gee, I just felt so sorry for him, man, because he says, you know the thing that made me so upset or like feel like, I don't know what, what our health system is up to, you know, private and public. Yeah. He says he's been to a hospital three times before he came to see me. And they always just, you know, giving him pain medication because he says he has pain in those areas that I yeah, told you about. Yeah. They give him pain medication, check blood for his kidneys. They tell him, come back. Then he goes to somewhere else. No one talks to him. Mm. No one even asks him, like, um, why, why your arms are so big yeah, you know yeah, they just yeah. look at him and judge him with a stigma have stigma against him and so i felt like i really need to help this guy because he can really benefit um i believe after obviously after blood work and stuff yeah, from testosterone yeah. replacement therapy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you it's know? painful to see those patients like people who mm-hmm. come to looking for help and they even tell you straight i think it's my low testosterone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they'll still people the doctor or whatever mm-hmm. will do what, everything else except to give you a TRT. Yeah, yeah, man. They'll send you psychology. Yeah. They'll do blood tests. And no, no but help. I mean, what would be your now? What's your uh, management plan for this patient? Okay, so first I I need to see where where are we standing? Where is he standing? Yeah, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. in ter- what's going on in his body? The the lumps that he has are areas of synthol that have collected um, in an abnormal way. So these will need to be removed. You know, mm. um, those are what's causing his pain. But in terms of all his other symptoms, I need to find out how is his liver function, how yeah. is his cholesterol, how is but his blood Just pressures. to take you back um, a little bit. Mm. So w- what did this guy present to you? Because to you? Yeah. it's... Pain. It's, pain. So you just the had these pains. And the pain yeah. there, yeah. which I found yeah. out were from those lumps mm. that were caused by mm. the synthol mm. and chronic injection at those lumps. So sort of yeah. like hematomas or... Mm. Organized so like abscesses. So, mm. yeah, for, for, sure. for, the, for the people that are watching. The yeah. Blood. Yeah, yeah. Does he have kids? No, he doesn't have kids. He lives alone. Apparently, yeah. he was uh, he had a lot of women back in the day yeah, when he was yeah, in yeah, his heyday. Yeah. <laughs> in his heyday. But, uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so basically, I need to find out where are we at. You know, all his organ functions. Um, I need to check. You know, his the hormones that are produced in his yeah. brain are they still functioning? And then find out what's the best we can do for him. And um, what Nas was saying, like you really. Like, you go to your doctor and say, Doc, I think my testosterone is low. Your doctor will probably do every other test in the, under the sun mm. and do your testosterone, but still not 
consider testosterone yeah, replacement yeah, therapy. Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess, I mean, some of, I've, I've worked in a primary health care setting and, and majority of the time that's, that's where we'll see the, these guys come. Mm. And um, just to defend, you know, our decision. I mean, I mean, if you if you know our public health care system, you know how overworked we yeah. are. We know, mm. you know, and and even cost cut uh, cost, cost cutting yeah, yeah, is. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge thing. You can't just order, you know, free tests and testosterone yeah. level on every single patient. Um, <clears throat> and it generally, like you're saying, there's quite a lot of psychosocial issues that are also involved, mm. which means you need to spend more time with the patient. Mm. You need to, you know, dig deep into the issues, which is something we and don't. And I suppose we don't you know have, the other yeah. aspect of it is. Because we have a failing public health system, um, a lot of people, obviously, if they have the means, they will try and seek out help from private. Yeah. But with, you know, currently our, how, our, how our health, even our private health care system is set up, yes, you could potentially go directly to an endocrinologist. But then would you know you needed an endocrinologist? No. So yeah. you'd need to start off at a general practitioner. A clinic, yeah. How many general practitioners are going to look at a man like that and say, yeah, I think you should see an endocrinologist. Or would they just rather say, I can treat his pain, I can treat the, yeah. the symptoms he's presenting with, but not Easy. really, let's not get down to the root cause. Yeah. So this guy could end up spending like months on end, not getting the, the, the appropriate care that, that he needs. Yeah. Or, you know, there's an online platform I know about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, this yeah, one. This one, this one. yeah, this one, this one, this one. Where you but can but actually get. I want to counter uh, yeah. what what you said, right? Yeah. About how we've got long queues and whatever. This man has, is probably is is hypogonad. He's got hypogonadism. Okay. His own testosterone is buggered, right? Mm. Because of his long term use. Look at everything he's going through, and so many men out there are going through. They can't perform how they used to, whether it's sexually or physically. Mm. Mm. Energy is down. Cortisol is up. They just feel they just feel like they are not a man anymore. Mm, you understand? Mm, mm. And that what does that lead to? Depression, like he has. Mm. Suicide, you know. Yeah, that yeah. suicide yeah, yeah. thoughts and so forth. So what makes someone who you're gonna sit for thirty minutes and talk about their diabetes better mm. than a man who comes with serious uh, a serious problem of hypogonadism? Why is it that a man who comes with problems of manliness? gets pushed aside. Why is that? Mm. No, you know? I, I think, so, I th I think it, the problem is not just <coughs> testosterone or man-related issues. The problem is, you know, all around, whatever condition you come with, we mm. tend to just try and, I mean, if, if I even know what problem you have, I, I, I just make sure I cover that little bit I have, you know, just check, is your sugar well controlled today? Mm. And, and if it is, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't bother to ask, mm. how did you even get it so well controlled? Because, I mean, patients also know the tricks of the system, you know. Patients will starve themselves a day and more so that their HGTs in the morning are low. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah, if yeah. you're not digging deep, you're not, you know, doing blood and following up the HbA1c, it's easy for you to just... You know, yeah. repeat the script and send the patient away. But I think what I was trying to say is that, I mean, it's less time for the doctor and because of, other, the, you know, the problems that we have. Mm. Um, but, I mean, you touched on something that I, that's very important about the fact that, you, I mean, you obviously concluded that this guy is hypogonad because he's been using uh, mm. testosterone for a long time and probably didn't, you know, um, didn't worry about any post- yes. Um, testosterone therapy to bring back his natural testosterone production. Mm. Um, just, I mean, just, just yeah, what, what, what are the functions? That's a good, good I mean, uh, conversation uh, to have. Uh, I think we can probably base a lot of this uh, episode around testosterone and, and mm. testosterone replacement therapy. And also, we can also touch on, you know, because specifically in this guy, he was using exogenous testosterone mm, you know, mm, getting testosterone mm. and putting it into his body so what that effect what effect that has on the body yeah um using it uh, you know incorrectly at high doses but do they know and that? Do, does everyone who's using it know because i asked him so do you know what testosterone so i actually think it does to the yeah, body and so he didn't know so i think i think it's important for us first to talk about what does testosterone do to the body yeah what, what is yeah, actually its actual function yeah yeah then we can talk a little bit about you know the incorrect method of using testosterone. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll talk to you about the, the right way. Yeah, that's And good. who actually, that's good. actually should uh, have TRT. I think also since 
I mean, we know that there are people out there using it incorrectly or mm. abusing it, as what we can say. And perhaps um, reach out to them as well to be able to reach out to platforms like us and look for help before things actually go. go yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wow. So let's start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nas, I think um, you, you being the, the quietest member currently <laughs> on the table, I want you to tell us a little bit about testosterone and what it does in the, in the body. Okay, and so give us the history, the yeah. studies, the research that's been done on testosterone <laughs> over time. <laughs> oh, poor Ness. Ness, is, Ness is the genius at the table. <laughs> so. Okay, look, so a body, a human body is heavily influenced by hormones, right? Mm -hmm. You can imagine like, like you can imagine building like a brick wall or something, right? Like a building and you can build it, it'll stay as it is for a long time, Right. But a, a body, a, a living organism is different. It's under an influence of, it needs to be constantly told what it needs to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. So hormones are there to tell the body what to do constantly. I can give you an estrogen hormone, right? And all of a sudden you start to develop breasts, you start to develop these different kinds of things. And if you can give, you can give a, a, a woman testosterone, and she can start to develop hair, she can start to develop um, an enlarged clitoris, you know, these kind of different kind of things, right? So your body needs to be constantly told what kind of things it needs to what what it needs to be doing right so testosterone is like the male hormone right so it gives you it gives you a lot of sexual desire it gives you um muscle mass mm -hmm. it it helps you with um like your mood a lot of it with your mood right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so if you have if you have a deficiency in testosterone which happens to us inevitably as you get older you start to reduce those yeah what do the studies show on that I, mean, I mentioned this so many times. This <laughs> I know you love it, so I want you to so say it again. Many times. So, so, so you said you said there's there's libido, obviously, libido, so sexual yeah. desire. Ting. We'll have an image pop up here. <laughs> Nas, you want to go through the list again, and then in the in the edit, he's just gonna. So bone ting. density. Okay. You said yes, okay. right, and uh, and you said something else. Um, bone density. You said yeah. muscle mass. Yeah. You said mass. mood changes. Mood, yeah. mood. Yeah. So mood, mood changes. changes. Libido. Yeah. Yeah. And fertility and can uh, also just development of the of your guys, secondary so uh, sexual, exactly. sexual characteristics. Think about we're all together at adversity, right? A guy at university who's 20 years old mm -hmm. can wake up in the morning or not even, let's not even say wake up. You can study the night before, right? Sleep at 3 a.m. Yeah. Wake up at 6 a.m. Go yeah. and write your exam. Yeah. Get back from your exam. Get, change your clothes. Put on your soccer clothes, go and play a soccer match. Yeah. Get back from the soccer match, back into res, and change, shower, change, go to a party. Yeah, post exam yeah. party. We had post those exam party. Time. That yeah. always happened. After yeah. a soccer match, you go to exam you go to a party. At two, three AM, you're still fresh, you can still get an erection. You yeah. can still have sex, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 You can go yeah. at 3 a.m. have sex. <laughs> I, I wake up know. in the morning. Oh, is this is your routine, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's, 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 he's telling us about his own routine. Us about, yeah, you know, you know all of us used, used to, to do that. <laughs> hey, hey, I was in bed by 10. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <let's, laughs> like, but we get your point. We yes. get your point. And you wake up in the morning and go to the dining hall, have breakfast with everyone. And debrief about how your yeah, day so, was so... So just, just so that the viewers at, at home uh, understand, because now they, a lot of the people online and on social media, they, uh, they're getting to know us a bit better. And they want, they, a few people have actually asked how we know each other. So just so that you guys all know, we all basically lived together at, uh, at, at Rez and we studied at the University of Wits. And so that's why this, this topic, this uh, interesting story <laughs> may be relatable for those of you who've gone through now the similar experience. Me, now you tell me someone at the age of 35, 40, 45 yeah. can still do that. Because literally you could sleep that morning after breakfast and wake up midday and repeat what you've done the previous day. And that is all probably testosterone. Do you think that, that it's all testosterone related to? I also feel like, like I also I feel mean, like yo, now my knees click when I stand <laughs> up. <laughs> So There's other things that no, are also changed. Testosterone is, is a large to testosterone, but yeah, yeah age is definitely yeah. and age yeah. is, um, testosterone is a large impact of the the description that I just gave. Mm. Is that not so? Now, Nas, then a question to follow on what he said. Do you think if if somebody who had low test or naturally low test, you mm. know, as you yeah. age, 
I start TRT. Do you think I'll be able to <laughs> sleep at three? Wake up at <laughs> wake you up. You'll be surprised. Yes, hundred percent. You think so? I think so. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's start there. What is TRT? No, no, no. We still have. We have. We've talking. Uh, spoken about what is uh, testosterone, what is testosterone? Mm. Yeah. and we know now. Obviously. You know what what testosterone does, mm. but let's talk a little bit about like the common symptoms that someone would come to mm. us and tell us, "Hey, I've got this problem, I've got that problem." Okay, we mentioned this in the first episode, right? So, but it's usually it starts with vague symptoms and there's more serious ones. Okay, so you're starting to maybe feel tired, uh-huh. brain fog, you uh, there's like you, constant fatigue, right? Muscle mass is decreasing. And then also even with starts, external stimulus, like you're going to the gym or you're doing even, something, and, and even with, you're losing muscle. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then and then also, it starts to it starts to become a real serious problem once you start to have erectile dysfunction. That's when most people start to come and say, "I have an issue." Uh huh. Right? Yeah. Or low libido. And low libido. Uh-huh. Mm. Okay. So those are the symptoms of low mm-hmm. testosterone. So that's how. You, so so anyone that's you know obviously don't wait until you've got no erection to come yeah, in, to yeah. come and consult for this problem. Uh, I think is probably the takeaway point, mm. but it can so, be as subtle as mood changes, huh? Yeah, like yeah. just feeling low mood, depressed, don't know why. Mm-hmm. So, like I know, I mean, I've read about this, um, the fact that exercise, you know, increases, especially, you know, weight training increases testosterone production, which is why I find that after an exercise, I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm ready. Yeah, I mean, if you guys saw this morning, I, I train in the morning and I'm, I'm just ready to tackle the day. Mm. Um, and and when I read that kind of you know studies or information, it, it, it I could relate to it, you know. So so I mean I can attest that you know with exercise you're definitely going to increase the amount of testosterone you're producing. Mm. Um, but have you had but, periods where you were like, okay, maybe you took a week off, for example, yeah. and you felt like, oh, I'm feeling I'm feeling like I've got less energy, I don't have. You know, I'm not sleeping Extra. well. Because sleep, uh, even sleep, the, the, they say testosterone, if you have low yeah, test, yeah. your sleep, you can have sleep disturbance. Yeah. No, I, I, well, I, I've, never, I've never experienced that. Mm. Um, so I guess I've just, for now, because, you know, some, we're still a bit young, so you have the, you know, the time to train yeah, and do yeah. all these things. But I'm sure with time, I might, I might, I might reach that. Obviously, we can't see what's going on in the body unless we're drawing blood from you every hour. Yeah, but yeah. I think that when you now you in your early thirties, mm. you you feel okay. You still look young. You know, you live a healthy mm. lifestyle. But when you go to the gym in the morning and you come out feeling that high that you do, mm. maybe your testosterone is peaking. Yeah. To what you were so yeah. Yeah. a lot of yeah. hormones so. that get released, you know, after a session. I don't think it's just testosterone. There's also endorphins. Yeah, endorphins. yeah. you yeah. feel Adrenaline. good. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I was listening. There's another podcast I listened to called the Huberman Lab. He's a neuroscientist. Mm. And he does a lot of interesting studies on dopamine and those types of things. And he said that one of, you know, in life you got to go through difficulty to actually feel naturally happy. So yeah. yeah. Things so like the way you can stimulate that is like exercise is one. You're putting yeah. a stress on the body. Mm-hmm. And through that stress, when you come out of that stress, your body naturally releases yes. dopamine. Like, oh, well done. You got yeah. through that. Yeah. If you go through um, like a cold plunge, mm-hmm. you're going into an ice bath or even a cold shower. Yeah. That causes your, your body to be like in, in, a, in a stress mode. Mm. And once you've come out of that stress mode, yeah. your body's like, oh, we got through that. Let me give you some happy hormones. Um, and so I think that exercise has many benefits. One of them is, I is can definitely tell you, test. I can study med school for six years over again just to walk in the great hall and, and get that graduation certificate. Mm. <laughs> that was like testosterone, dopamine, <laughs> Everything released at the same time. <laughs> that was time. everything released at the same time. I could have cheersed on stage. <laughs> 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 I, I, that was the best. <laughs> but anyway. So how true yeah. is it? How true is it that... With low testosterone, cognitive function is also affected. And even mm. the Huberman also mentioned that like uh, testosterone is a hormone that makes effort feel good. You know, so if you have mm. more testosterone, you'll you'll be happier doing those hard, difficult things. Ah, I see. Yeah. Mm. And I also think that exercise is like is like the. I think it's a it's like a meme or something. People always say the first antidepressant you should take is go to the gym. If you're a man yeah. and if you feel yeah. low mood, yeah. just go to the gym. Just go to the gym. Yeah. Exactly. Mm, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I I definitely think that it it does have a a, a mental effect apart from just the physical. You yeah. definitely have some uh, mental. mental effect. Yeah. Those are the 
signs of low testosterone. Yeah, yeah. Low testosterone. Um, but uh, you had touched on it, you know. You had mentioned yes, when, yes. Um, the, the, when the Clantler was talking about testosterone and, you know, when he gyms in the morning and this and that. Now, in terms of diagnosis, how do we diagnose low testosterone? Obviously, you can take blood, uh, blood tests. But uh, I think maybe, Vish, you can talk a little bit about yes, like, the, yeah. the peaks, the troughs. How does testosterone uh, cycle during, during the day? Like, um, you know, should, and at what point, when should we test? When should we not test? Um, what's the optimal time for, if, I'm, if, I, if I think I have low test and you send me for blood tests, when should I go and get tested? Okay, so again, with, with low testosterone, um, so as uh, Nassim mentioned about uh, clinical signs and symptoms, mm. so again, we categorize them obviously clinically, uh, mood disturbances, all of those type of things. So you, say you have now a high suspicion of testosterone deficiency. Mm. So you ideally want to do some blood work, okay, and then, I mean, to diagnose um, basically hypogonadism, there's two different types. Okay, so you can be you can have primary hypogonadism or secondary hypogonadism. Mm. Okay, we'll discuss that a bit later as well. Mm. So basically, when when you want to obviously do your blood work, you're going to do your testosterone. You're going to do a um, sex hormone ga- binding globulin. So basically, um, looking for your free testosterone, and you know if too much of testosterone is bound bound in the in the body, um, as well as your albumin, your normal TMP, uh, your like kidney function. But you're also going to do your luteinizing hormone and uh, follicle stimulating hormone as well. Mm. Okay, so okay, apart from that as well, we we'll, we we'll also talk about diabetes and um, basically other medical conditions. This is aiding in yeah. in mm. hypogonadism. So you also mm. do your HbA one C, your lipid profile. Okay, so basically for cholesterol, for, for cholesterol, yeah, because yeah. these can all <clears throat> contribute to um, you know vascular problems. Yeah. yeah. So essentially, diagnosing on blood work. So if you have, I mean, your main thing you're going to be looking for is your testosterone level. So ideally, there's a certain time in the day which you want to check your testosterone level. So cyclically, normally your testosterone is higher in the morning Mm -hmm. and lower at night. Okay, so I mean, you'd encourage the person to get their blood work tested in the morning up till around 11 a.m., Mm. Anything afterwards, you'd advise them rather to just get it tested the next day. If they happen to <clears> test maybe, late, let's say, later in the day and you wa- you want to track their levels, would you suggest, okay, on the next time, you're also going to test at that time? So let's say 12 to 1 <clears> o'clock, they decide to go and test. Now you're like, okay, let's 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 do some intervention. And then next time you test, you're going to mm. also test at that time? Or? So the thing is, I think, look, you don't get a fair and accurate representation because you also have different uh, pulsatilities throughout the day of your testosterone mm. uh, release. So I, I, would, I would suggest, you know, they, they get tested during the right times. Um, okay. So you see what, you know, their, yeah. basically the higher level would yeah. be, the, you know, yeah. the peak and the troughs course, rather. Course, yeah. um, so, I mean, first you'd obviously look at your testosterone level, you know, if it's low. Um, so obviously with age, there's different levels of what's considered low. Mm. Okay, and then um, I think we'll we'll go through that a bit later. We just obviously yeah, yeah. we'll check those values. Okay, guys, I know this is a this is a bit of a sidetrack. Yeah, but um, you know I've been asked multiple times. So I'll see someone, and this patient will say to me, uh, "Doc, um, I think I need you know TRT." And I ask, mm. "Okay, why? Why? What's the problem?" Mm. And they say, "You know, back in like we were saying when I was twenty one, I used to go five rounds." Now I only go three rounds, mm. you know? I mean, it's, do, you, do you think, you know, testosterone levels actually play a role in that? Um, our expectations? I, think, just, I, think, uh, I, I definitely... People, people I, don't know how long sex is supposed to be, man. How many do, but, yeah, but, but, but when these they, guys come... You know, do, uh, when, they, when, people ask, when people speak to you, do they come to you and go like, yeah, I think my testosterone lo- level is low, or do they just go... No, they say. No, th- th- that's how the discussion mm-hmm. normally starts. I think there's a problem with my testosterone so, levels. I mean, look, now we've, we've gone through diagnosis. Now, yes. Now, so most people now kind of get the idea of, okay, if you've got these lists of symptoms, you come to us... We'll generally, you know, do these tests. We'll yeah, give you advice yeah, yeah. and do these tests. But now I think it's important for people to understand what actually can we do about t- yeah, low yeah, testosterone. Yeah. And the question then comes in: testosterone replacement therapy. What is that, mm. Nas? 
Okay, so Rich was mentioning those are different blood tests, right? So there's GnRH, which is a hormone that secretes by secreted by the um, hypothalamus, which goes to the pituitary gland, which produces LH and FSH, which go to the testes. So all the testes to produce sperm and to produce uh, testosterone, right? Mm -hmm. Over time, and I think as it's you important older, for people to understand. We'll probably put up a graphic there so people can understand this yeah. that pathway. Uh, for testosterone. Yeah, and then those blood tests will tell us where the problem is. Testosterone goes back and inhibits those those ones that secrete those hormones. Yeah, so basic explanation, testosterone tells the brain, hey, stop making... There's enough. So There's if enough. If you have a high testosterone level, so for example, if you're injecting or taking exogenous testosterone, yeah. Yeah. Yes. your body so is going to tell the juicing. brain, stop, <laughs> stop producing testosterone. So basically that signal or that impulse that goes to the brain... Um, basically to, to stimulate GnRH secretion is now cut off or it's, it's inhibited. Mm, exactly. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the idea with the, the cycling, the reason why we have you know, high in the morning and low in the night is, so, is because when it dips in the evening, you, know, you stimulate GnRH. Because, because the test levels are low, you stimulate it for the next morning so that it creates the release. Or am I getting it wrong here? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so... <laughs> no, is that not the cycle? I, I get what you're saying. I think, okay. I, think, I, I think that diurnal variation is just... It's just a cycle the body Oh, has I, I, I thought that yeah, it's because... So, for example, so what happened... Okay, what, what tends to happen... Here's the thing. Right. So now what happens is that a lot of people... Okay. Yeah, so what happens is a lot of people is they take exogenous testosterone and it inhibits all those things. Yeah. So this is the, the common people who need TRT are those people who had prolonged testosterone use in, the, in their past. Mm -hmm. And also elderly people who also now have um, low testosterone, right? And Just also naturally. Tend to have, naturally oh, okay. And also tend to have diabetes and, um, yeah. and uh, erectile dysfunction, yeah. right? Yeah. So those are the, those two. An, an elderly person above the age of 40 who has um, low testosterone and diabetes and also someone who has pro, uh, prolonged testosterone use, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those people really need testosterone replacement therapy. Mm. Where, what we... What's happening is that because of that shutdown of all that system, we're giving enough testosterone just to give them those function back again, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. TRT is different from juicing, mm -hmm. right? Juicing is where you give so much testosterone, it's ridiculous. One gram, like Brendan was saying. One gram a week, right? That's mm. too much. Yeah. And not, not only that, they also, they also take other stuff like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. DHT, yeah. Mm. all those other things they take on top of it. We're giving just mm. enough that it shouldn't really be, it should be thought as thought of as a replacement for the natural testosterone yeah. that existed before, yeah. right? Yeah. So basically yeah. we're taking your testosterone level from what it is to back what it should to be. Normal. Yeah. 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 To, to normal. Back to levels. normal. Yeah. Yeah. Back to normal. But again, yeah. with, with, with that being said, with the pathway you've mentioned, um, so as we're mentioning primary and secondary hypogonadism, so essentially primary would be the problem is at the testes. Yeah. Okay, so either problems like if you've, I mean, testicular tumor or infections or mm. um, certain conditions which may predispose you to having a testicular problem or, mm -hmm. you know, like orchitis or mom's orchitis, you know, that's something mm -hmm. we see very commonly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. in the casualty. Okay, so this, those are just some of the common things. That will need testosterone. So that, that would be diagnosed with a low testosterone but a high LH. Yeah. Okay, and because you, your body is, I mean, it's, it's your brain is signaling to the testes that you need to produce testosterone. Yeah. So basically in that one, your balls are not so, working, so wait, your testes are not working in mm -hmm. that case. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas Thing. now secondary is now a problem in the, um, at the axis in the brain, basically. Yeah. Okay, so then you would have a low testosterone and you may have a low or normal uh, LH level. Mm. So there's different kinds of testosterone placement therapy. So just some of like the secondary hypogonism causes as well. Yeah. are more systemic uh, causes. Right. So in those cases of primary and secondary hyper hypogonadism, they definitely need TRT. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. We first need to mention first lifestyle modification, right? Obviously, we mentioned all those previously. Zinc, right? Vitamin D, exercise, good diet, sleep, yeah. um, all those kind of good lifestyle things. And also those supplements like uh, ashwagandha and Tonga Dali, right? Mm -hmm. And I, there were some people who were not we understanding that. We had mentioned it before, but I think this, this I think episode is, say, uh, um, is dedicated to it. Yeah. So I think yeah. we should, mm -hmm. should talk uh, specifically on this yeah. topic. A little There's bit so many things that can increase testosterone, right? So, so should, go through a few of the most popular and most effective methods and what that you can use, naturally... Perhaps. Okay, uh, there's shilajit, which is like a molasses. There's fredogia agrestis. How do there's these Tell us a bit about Most of them increase LH. So that by the pituitary gland to produce more LH, which goes to, to the testes and produce 
and ah, similar mm-hmm. to produce more testosterone. And these are all uh, natural supplements? Natural okay. supplements. Okay. I want to go over that, how to actually take the Tongat Ali and Ashwagandha. Because mm. we yeah, wanted I mean, to mention it before. Yeah, you me. I, I always thought you just take Tongat Ali, Ashwagandha and ZMA all together at the same time, mm-hmm. consistently. Yeah, you have to actually cycle Tongat Ali. You have to take it for four weeks and then two weeks off and then repeat again. And in you those two weeks, take, you should use ashwagandha. Yes. Mm. And, and this, you, I'm guessing this is evidence-based, obviously. Yes, yeah. evidence-based. Yeah. Maybe we should Just share the us, name yeah. of the study yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. where we... Yeah. No, we'll, we'll put it, put it somewhere. Put it why, yeah. why, why do you cycle between the two? So you Tongue get LDN, you get yeah. adaptation. You get like, your body gets used to it. Mm. I right? see. So it mm-hmm. stops working. Yeah. So you have to now cycle it so that it can still produce its effect. So what you can do is, if you're getting confused with four weeks, two weeks, and you don't know which one you are, you can just take one month of ashwagandha, one month of um, Tongat Ali, and just keep doing one month, one month. And you can actually do it consistently. So it may every day. Mm. Ashwagandha, you don't have to cycle. You can take ashwagandha every day. Right? So you can decide by yourself which one do you want to try and see. Mm. Mm. Wait, you said ashwagandha you can take every day. Ashwagandha you can take every day. But then you said... You Tongue should, Ali, you have to cycle. Have to cycle it's a Tongue Ali. Ali. Oh, so, so you, okay, so just so that I understand correctly, with ashwagandha, do you have to, if you're taking it every day, in those two week periods, you just stop taking the Tongue Ali and you can continue maintaining your ashwagandha. Then. I don't think you should take both at the same time. So, if so you want to take. The more effective method is to actually cycle one, between the two. One at a time. Yeah. So, different type of cycling. The biggest reason why yeah. we offer. Yeah. Why we offer, you know, these approaches, we, lifestyle, yeah. Tongat Ali, Ashwagandha, is because yeah. perhaps the undesirable effects of TRT. But I think mm. most common one also, being... This is also over the counter, so you can go to the yeah, chemist, you can, go, you can just buy it. What I'm saying is that they, when you explain TRT to someone and you explain it to them properly, they might say, no, let me try your mm. other... Well, ways. let's talk about and why people may not want to go on TRT. Yes. So What's the biggest the one, why? the biggest one is that it can cause infertility. Yeah. Mm. So especially in young men. Yeah, yeah so especially. Like TRT, obviously testosterone yeah, replacement. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we're, t- we're replacing the testosterone then by various methods, but and we'll talk about the various methods, so but the, the biggest side effect, I think, and the biggest concern for a lot of people is the infertility. And, yeah. how, and that's, I think you can tell us a little bit about how that occurs. Okay, so you remember that axis, right? So testosterone, excess more, more testosterone will go back to the LH and produce and mm. inhibit LH secretion. And LH is the one that goes to the testes and tells it to produce <clears throat> sperm yes. and also testosterone. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have less LH because of the excess testosterone, you can have less spermatogenesis and then that's where you get that reduced uh, infertility. Yeah. Yeah. But mm. if, you're, if you're doing prolonged excess testosterone like juicing, that will shut down the whole system and your testes have to atrophy. Right, yeah, yeah. as long as you don't get testicular atrophy, you should maintain your fertility, right? Mm-hmm. So that when you stop testosterone replacement therapy, then you can maybe go back and be fertile again. Yeah, but if it, if your testes have already shrunk, then so there's how a big do people problem. know what like fertility is like? How do they? How, how would you know? You can do. Um, Sperm well, obviously, before you, you, you do those testosterone tests, you're not going to rush to go do those tests. Yeah. And before you uh, the do definition, the testosterone, you can. Uh, I mean, do you want children? So yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a big children. question. So, mm. uh, for example, I had a consultation with someone today, and uh, you know, we I had it was a follow up consultation, and I got his test levels back, and I said to him, before we go down this path of TRT, do you want to have children or not? Obviously, elderly, more elderly men over the age of 40, 50 is now they've had enough children in their life, but they are feeling the symptoms. And yeah. they're like, mm-hmm. I don't care whether I don't have children mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not going to change my life. I just want to feel better. But for a younger, you know, late, mid 30s, maybe early 30s, and some in some of the cases, I mean, even, even 20s, kids, some, 20s some, sometimes, uh, they TRT. want to still have children. And then the options for TRT obviously become a little bit more limited. We have to try certain things so that we don't block that that natural yeah, pathway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I think we've covered some of the natural ways or the general measures mm, yeah, to yeah. increase your natural testosterone mm, yeah, production, yeah. the exercising, so, so yeah, I think weight loss, etc. I, I, I think it's important that people understand, you know, what what are the options for TRT, mm. and what what can we what can we offer? Well, what can any doctor offer you? Okay, most co- most commonly we do injections, right? It's um, in history, or are you talking about us? Us. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, yeah, us. Us. The most common, like, most, the common most common is injections. And safest studied is injections. Injections. Yeah. Well, oral? What, has, has anybody sta- uh, done? So there's a lot of new 
evidence coming out that oral is safe, but we don't use oral yet. There's also sublingual, which absorbs yeah. under your tongue. There's patches as well. Yeah, there's no, patches. Um, there's ones that you can put under your skin. Those people who inject insulin for diabetes, yeah, put subcutaneous. So there's a lot of there's a lot of ways, um, and they all have their benefits. Okay, so let's just drawbacks. discuss a bit of the so pros the most and common cons. one that everyone knows the injection. You know the pro the the con is that you're gonna inject yourself every two weeks, or every week depending on what's mm. best for you. Maybe even once a month, but we need to know what's best for you. We like two weeks or one week, um, and obviously injection is uncomfortable, but you get used to it. Your doctor can do it for a few times. You can even start doing it yourself, mm. um, injecting mm. yourself. You know. Um, it's safe, and I think we need to talk a lot about the safety because people are worried out there. Doctors, even medical yeah, professionals, yeah. will tell you no, it's not safe. Um, I think we must talk about all the safety, but it's safe. Um, it's longer acting than the oral, you know, version, mm. and someone might prefer it because you get one injection and you forget about it for two weeks. It's also the liver mm. toxicity and yes, things like that you that, avoid, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're taking an oral one, we worry that you'll get liver masses and liver failure. Yeah, it's um, a bit complicated yeah. to explain. Yes, yes, yeah. kidney, yeah. kidney problems. Yeah, yeah. Kidney problems. It's safe and it's safe, and we know how to do it properly at mm. the gentleman's yeah. clinic. So, um, also yeah, the, the expected the expected levels or the expected outcomes. It's, it's a bit more tricky in terms of oral. Yes, yes. Whereas so injection. Why, why is that? So with fast first pass metabolism yeah. uh, absorption as well. So there's a lot of factors. I think also that mm. would need to be considered in terms of oral. Agents versus um, injectable agents. So for the layman, so they yeah. understand why. So injectable has been studied really well and understood. But I mean, there's the the new studies about the sublingual and the oral are, uh, you know, um, is even nasal and nasal. Mm. So they are encouraging, and I think in in the future we might we might go that route because I wouldn't creams. mind if I'm 40 or 45 yeah. just putting a tablet under my tongue and you know getting in my car and driving to work knowing I'm <laughs> with an erection <laughs> with an, I'm set for erections <laughs> wife is happy I'm set for power in the gym I'm happy at work patients yeah. are happy yeah. mm. less side effects just with a tongue uh, so, you know a tablet under my tongue yeah. so when the, when the time comes I'm going to go on TRT 100% I, I am going on TRT <laughs> when the time comes but okay so just something we have mentioned also in the yeah. previous podcast like with taking finasteride as well so it does block uh, your a, tes- a pathway of testosterone mm. okay um, but does it DHT. actually lower your testosterone so DHT so inhibitor. just mention that word so it's a 5 alpha it's a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor right so 5, five alpha reductase converts the testosterone to DHT and DHT is like you can think about it as the the masculinizing hormone, right? It produces beard growth and hair loss, mm. right? And also the increases your te- your um, penis size actually as well. Mm. Uh, so so we're just gonna sure. Just so now, just sipping on DHT. Sipping on DHT. DHT. Yeah. yeah. But, but actually, yes, when you what, whoa, whoa, whoa. can I just on. ask? D- you? DHT causes in increase in beard growth, yeah. hair loss, yes. and penis size length. Yes. So you're telling me if I took even finasteride, like, it potentially could have shrunk my penis? No, grown, so, grown it. Shrink, shrunk because shrunk. It's shrunk because you're it's blocking, it's a, you're less blocking DHT. your DHT. Okay. You're blocking the DHT. Mm-hmm. Shrunk. Okay, so, no, I don't know. No, so I guess I guess there's probably a time for all of this. I mean, your your penis is not growing your whole entire life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you were yeah, taking yeah. it, <laughs> like all this usually happens at puberty. I guess yeah, if you yeah. Give yeah, a yeah, fifteen year course, old boy finasteride, his penis won't grow to its full glory. Have, True, but again, your your estrogen levels may also be higher because your your free testosterone or your your yeah. your less strong testosterone, so your DHT yeah. is your strongest form of testosterone, mm. Mm. is being inhibited. And I'm sure, like your finasteride for hair loss, one milligram is not totally blocking DHT, mm. um, which is why they do mention some of the side effects. Yeah, um, yeah and you may all, I mean, I guess, end up with slightly higher estrogen. So, I mean, potentially, if you were taking a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, would you experience some of the symptoms that people with low it, test... Yes, definitely, yes. definitely. Low libido yeah. is a side effect of... And um, gynecomastia. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mood, mood uh, yeah. You can uh, see disturbances like, like as Anava, well. Anava is DHT, and like women who take Anava have uh, a larger crit- clitoris. What? Yeah. Sure. That is a thing that happens. Wow. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Anava, what, what is that? 
It's DHT. DHT. Oh, but it's, yeah. it's yeah, often yeah. used. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, I think we, uh, to, to, to push code. the conversation a bit further about the methods of administration and incorrect methods and how mm. people can yeah. end up with. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's talk about juice, man. Mm. Let's talk juice about the, the, the juice. That's the <laughs> no, we'll talk about juice no, think, first because okay. that's what's interesting. Before, that's, before I'm sure a lot of, a lot yeah, of yeah. men uh, have, if, if you're a man, chances are the likelihood that you've been in a gym around people who are taking their own versions of testosterone, <clears throat> yeah. not replacement, testosterone enhancement therapy, let's call it that, and have misconceptions about it, have, uh, you know, have had bad experiences. Some may have good experiences, but I think it's important for us to distinguish between what that is and what normal TRT is, TRT oh. is that is offered. Yeah. And there is a bit of an overlap. Like you were talking about the injectable. Um, the one that we commonly use is testosterone sapionate. Correct? But that's, the dosing. That's actually, that's actually the one that you get in South African pharmacies. Yeah. Mm. Um, so that's what the, other the one common that's ones do we get in, in South Africa? Uh, they actually, actually aren't any. So any of the stuff that you know, Dr. Matthews was speaking about earlier is all things that people are getting uh, God knows from where. But we have access yeah. to proper testosterone in other forms, right? Mm. Yes. How yeah. where? No, we do they at do. the farm at our pharmacy. Compounding, compounding. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. We're we're busy with that, but yeah. I think uh, you know what's important is is to make the distinct you know, you know to distinguish yeah. between the two. So you know with Anava and you were mentioning Anava. Like we said, I, I think I think I mean we can't really discuss some of those things because they. I mean, it's not like you can get them anywhere. Or, or legally. No, I mean, look, yeah. legally, legally we yeah. can't get them anywhere, yeah. but so people are getting them illegally. Guys, my thing is that people are using them. People are using people them. People get them illegally. Look, we need we to know talk that. about this. Yes. The same way you know people use, use cocaine, use people them. use heroin, people use nyaupe. Now we want them. to... Uh, You're going to use it if you want to use it. Now you want it. to hide away yeah. when no, 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 no. people use juice. People use juice, they use yeah. cocaine. No, we're not saying... It's like saying, yeah, don't do... People use them both together. That's also true. And rats also use them. And end up with hyperism. <laughs> the reason why I was saying Which no, no, not to discuss <laughs> is firstly, I mean, if these things are not gotten over the counter, do we even know if it's just Anova? Do we even know what these do we know are taking? Oh, that's a point. It's, okay. uh, yeah, it, yeah, it becomes it becomes that. a tough one. But I think mm -hmm. what matters is us discussing so how, the, we can address the how we can address yeah. problems. And, and yeah. I mean, yeah. yes, yeah. we're also covering what, I mean, we, what do you do? we are saying. What is. Do do? I spoke to an endocrinologist in Cape Town and I was at a conference said bodybuilder came to him, mm. said, Doc, this is what I've been using for the past five years. Mm. I can't make my wife pregnant now for the past year. Assist me. There was nothing unethical about that, that mm. doctor helping mm. the patient yeah. to fall pregnant. Mm. And then the doctor even said to him, listen now, your wife is now pregnant. Let's move in this way. Reduce the dose of this thing you're using. Reduce the dose of this. Use this one at this dose. And basically put him on TRT. You know? mm, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with us helping. There's men. nothing wrong with exogenous <clears throat> testosterone. Yes. The, the problem is obviously the illegal things that we no one knows what yes, is inside yes. them, yeah. and the dosing problem, like we said. But, yeah. but no? here's a here's a more ethical question, right? Mm. So obviously, d most people use it mm -hmm. uh, and over the counter. Uh, sorry, not over the counter, but uh, my point is like most people use it not for any form of sports competition. Mm -hmm. They don't use it for bodybuilding. They mm. don't use it because they're a professional yeah. soccer player mm -hmm. or rugby mm -hmm. player or whatever. Is it like my patient just used it for his own yeah. aesthetics? For own enhancement. Nice. Yeah. So it's not like, so the ethical question then comes in is like, what are you aiding? What are you, you, you know, what are, what are you aiding and abetting here? Are you aiding a guy who just wants to look better in, in life? What what should we as healthcare professionals do? Yeah, should we, we say, uh, hey, listen, I don't think it's a good idea if you're just doing this to look good. To, for so, TRT no, or for, for, for No, no, not, not for TRT. Because TRT, to, in order for us to give you TRT, your levels have to be low. Yes. It's unethical mm. for me to no. prescribe you testosterone yeah. if I know if that... your levels are not low. Yeah. Mm. If you've got a normal level, but you're depressed, am I going to give you TRT? No. Mm. But now, here's... here's if you've got here's, bone here's, pains, for example, and your, TR, and your testosterone yeah. are normal, am I going to give you TRT? Yeah. Am I going to even actually, offer you TRT? There actually are studies that show that, I mean, don't forget, when they say normal or that normal range, yeah. that's normal for, obviously, that study population. And most of these TRT studies are actually quite low on uh, like uh, small numbers of, of patients. Of course, of course. So you might find someone sitting on 500... Mm -hmm. uh, 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 whatever nanomoles, measuring. I think it's nanomoles, yeah, nanomoles per deciliters, yeah. nanograms, yeah. Per deciliters. whatever it is, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, sitting on 500, 
but you know having concentration problems memory issues mm. muscle loss mm. depressed you know uh, low testosterone low sorry low libido is fine. um oh. and when you shoot him to 800 so basically what i'm trying to say is that i think there is there shouldn't be yes that's a guideline that we we mm. obviously use yes. because there's protocols that support this but i mean everything needs to be individualized i mean mm. if someone is coming to you like brandon's patient telling you doc i can't i'm struggling to have kids i'm doing it right and you do the bloods and you find that he's i mean he's sitting on 550 what do you do do you then say you know ethically i'm not allowed to true to now no, I agree to with, treat I agree you yeah. so so i think it's just true, a guy true i think i mean and and then it it, it can't, that big question comes in so symptoms are we treating the symptoms are we treating you know the how do we clinically diagnose and what are we going to use to to you know as a measure yeah, so to treat again, them i think i think it's the the aim of it is is the symptom so if someone has uh on biochemically so on blood results low testosterone but they have no symptoms are you going to treat them yeah no so, so, so you so, you, so, you so, aiding so, you so aiding pay- everything else right so, so yeah. as sure as all thyroid but say they have no symptoms you've just a patient say just said I need to do my blood you've test you've done yeah. the the blood test and you see that he has low testosterone but he's happy with his life So oh, in, in, a yeah, so like that, gonna... in a patient like that who's just come for a regular checkup yeah. just says hey doc I just want to get my blood done I'm 50 mm. years old I feel like everything is fine you know I've got no issues but then you do the bloods and it comes back showing low mm. maybe then you probe a bit more hey are you not sleeping you may yeah. find oh, something I think you can even probe before you take the blood and then you don't even have to take the blood yeah yeah, yeah I, the suppose. No need, yeah. Yeah. I suppose there's no need I suppose but I, i mean okay let's say we've gone through a full screening process this guy has nothing wrong besides his test levels come back low are we giving him test so or not i think i think the aim of it is to treat patients who have symptoms yes. and clinic and biochemically low testosterone levels okay so but 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 yeah leaning obviously i mean obviously the main component has to be low testosterone but we treating symptoms of yes. the low testosterone mm. i see but okay let me give you another example if we had a patient that came with just for example just depression i'm mm. feeling depressed low mood i can't seem to function uh and then you do the test level and his test levels are normal he's got none of the other symptoms are we treating him with test are we referring him to a psychiatrist but his test levels are normal but his test levels are now normal no, i think you you i think ideally you should explore all the other options as well because i mean again there are cons with just starting the person on person on testosterone you need yeah. to rule out a lot of other and things as well it's multifactorial exactly, exactly. Well. you're not yeah, just yeah. going to shoot so i you have to, is you have it is per patient like yeah. what you're talking about is usually edge cases mm. most of the people we see who need these problems actually have low testosterone yeah, yeah. Mm. so in those cases I've, i don't know i've we've not seen i haven't seen those kind of situations happening where there's a normal testosterone yeah, and they normal. have symptoms yeah. of low testosterone yeah yeah they do have right? symptoms and, uh, obviously in those in those cases that you're mentioning it's probably something else that's causing it maybe hypothyroidism or something mm. else mm. Yeah. yeah rule out everything else yeah. mm. and in with your you doctor and patient must decide together what to do mm. as, and it's also personal i think i, I think that's a, that's a fair way yeah. to put because there's a lot of like smarties yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get can that can i just can i just add something that's we can't the actually, can't actually is is a, it's called an adam questionnaire um to guide with those with those complicated ones you know because oh. i mean they they they're actually going to be rare i mean majority of the patients we're going to see with the symptoms are probably going to have low test, low test. Oh, okay. but if you do find those funny cases where it's high but they have you know mm. they have all the symptoms or whatever there actually is an independent a questionnaire you can use ah uh, cuz maybe um, that guy's baseline yeah. exactly the guy's baseline, uh, baseline yeah so the questionnaire is quite i mean it's quite important it will help you so, then score the patient and and it also c- can help you in patients who who don't report it yeah. at first um so i've got a question like another example can making. i just cover some of the the questionnaire yeah like sure sure so yeah, give yeah, us yeah, a sure. questionnaire why, why, just yeah. quickly go through a few of the questions that you'd ask yeah. yeah and maybe yes, people yeah, at home yeah. the can can do the can you just questionnaire check? Yeah, yeah exactly for themselves so, so for example some of the of the symptoms which we we have covered so a declining or decline feeling of you know general well-being so just these anhedonia scores, these scores right? scored yeah. so you get you get a point for that depending on you know if it's moderate if it's mild whatever um things like joint pain um are they complaining of muscular aches a lot um excessive sweating increased need for sleep um you know irritability nervousness anxiety physical exhaustion uh decrease in muscular strength de- a depressed mood um feeling that you 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 have passed your peak and and feeling burnt out having hit rock bottom a uh, decrease in beard growth decrease in ability and frequency 
uh, to perform sexually, decrease in the number of morning erection as well as decrease in, in a sexual desire. I mean, quite an, a, a comprehensive cover because mm -hmm. you can see they're yeah. covering a lot of like psycho cognitive problems, physical problems, sexual and, um, problems and sexual issues, exactly. Okay. And then you get a score out of that. And from that score, depending on whether you, you know, so you'll have like a, no, you fine, or, or you, you have mild, uh, your mild case, your moderate case or severe case. Mm. And mm. then you get, you know, you then discuss with your patient that, listen, you do have problems, even though your test is telling you something else. Mm. Um, but it's, it's quite mild at yeah. the moment, mm. which, you know, mm. should we wait maybe a year or more? Or even and, like and less invasive, you know, like yes. lifestyle modifications, yeah. 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 things, you know, to naturally so stimulate. Guys, this is something that I want to check up on. Let's say, I mean, you guys are in the gym. Maybe this has happened to you before. Mm -hmm. Maybe it hasn't. Someone comes to you, a patient comes to us and says, listen, uh, doctor, oh, no, on <laughs> Jen's clinic. Someone comes to you and says, Dr. Essa, uh, I'm, I'm in the gym. I use juice. Please help me do it safely. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. That's a tough, a tough one. one. Uh, a tough one. You know, I mean, ethically, and that's kind yeah. of the question I was getting around, you know, somebody who's saying... No, I, I mean, I get that a lot. Yeah, that's mm. what I'm saying. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so maybe you can tell... I get tell, that question all the time. Us. So, I mean, the first thing I do, I mean, above everything, I'm a medical professional. So, yeah. I mean, I, I signed a Hippocratic Oath to always do no harm, you know. So, um, I know from my training the, 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 the side effects of this medication, which normally outweigh what, whatever they want to get. Mm. Um, so, I try my level best to first outline... You know, because people are going to take it, whether I say it or not. Yes. Actually, if They're you gonna if you're going to start it. off, mm. which is what I've learned, and, and the also years. like I, I think it's important to mention that people coming up to you in the gym and asking you that's not the correct way. You need to actually consult, which yeah. we have a platform yeah. for. Yeah. You know, you to consult. Answer, while you're giving your answer, I just want to say that um, I'm standing on the side that we should help them, and I'll explain why. But you can. That's mm. fine. That's fine. But see, again, but, all of these but drugs. But the thing is, maybe maybe it's yeah. because you cut me. I, yeah, sorry. I, I, I then tell you what I know about TRT or try and sort of, normally I'd find out, you know, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, why are you asking me this question? You know, have you, have you taken anything or what do you know about stuff? And, and I mean, 99% of the people I talk to know nothing. And, uh, and I know they're taking stuff and they, they'll, you know, the person will say, ah, you know, I see guys, they're growing. I'm not. And, uh, I and I mean, I, I've juice. seen you in scrubs, maybe walking out the gym, you're a doctor and you fit. So I'm sure you're the best person to ask. And, um, and I, I mean, obviously, I'll try and sort of find out how much they know and try and sort of add any gaps. Um, and then, and then we, we normally take it from there. And in all of that, I make sure I highlight the importance of getting help, the importance of, you know, cholesterol Taking checks, yourself, yeah. you know, mm. prostate problems, you know, diabetes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sleep <clears throat> problems, sleep <throat> apnea is a big one as well. So you know what changed so, my mind in all of this? I was mm. in a conference also a few years ago there's a non-profit organization that helps drug addicts so basically mm. nyaupe boys gives them clean needles but these clean. guys are basically mm. drug addicts yes hey, so i mean testosterone can be an addiction a whole lot of drug users heroin nyaupe go to this non-profit organization goes to areas in soweto and hands out clean needles clean syringes uh, cotton wool to clean proper tourniquets so that they can inject themselves properly because they also have the same thing that they they're gonna do it no matter mm. and in that they are decreasing hiv transmission they're decreasing things like heart problems like endocarditis mm. they basically so that's the whole concept behind the whole it. concept is to rather help a person and yes, then help so them do it the right way relatively yeah. yeah so if you come to me on Jen's clinic and say, Doc, I use steroids to look good, but I'm scared of the end result of this. Please help me. I'm going to help you just like yeah. Dr. Mm -hmm. Villagas no, but, said. But, yeah. but would you, I, think, I think the question he's, he is actually uh, posing is like, should we at the outset, it's a guy he's never used before. Are we going to say, look, I'll help you because you, I know you are going to use it or would I rather say, don't use it oh. I because you should, don't have a reason to discourage use it. it. But once they exactly. start, we can help. But not to say... What do you think, Nassim? The thing is, most patients who actually come to us have already started. Agree, have tried I, something I agree, I agree in the yeah. back room. Yeah. What, you're telling, what you're saying is like a, re, a patient we've not even seen before, which doesn't actually mm. happen. What's actually happening is that there's people in their 40s and 30s who actually have low T who are not getting help. <clears throat> Those are the mm. best who we are, we are there for, right? And I, there's yeah. people who have taken prolonged TRT... Uh, 
prolong the juicing and prolong the testosterone use, and who are now hypogonadism, who now have hypogonadism and need our help. Those are the people we're there to help. That's actually what's happening. You, you, this is coming from the stigma of oh, there's you guys are maybe there's people who are just coming to get juice for for like TRT. It's not happening. Mm. Most people actually need help. But what if what if say for example someone comes to you and they give you all of these symptoms? Yeah. So that they can be put are on you, TRT. Yeah, you would you would you give them for the normal happen. level? I haven't, I I haven't seen could. that though. Wish I haven't seen that. We haven't seen. And people, they, yeah. they won't even so, have those problems. They won't. They won't. People will be gymming normally. They'll be. But they'll tell game. you, I've got this. They'll I've got low that. mood. I've got and this. And if they that, do want that, you, yeah. most you know, likely ninety percent of them won't even come to us. On social go media, to, you know, there's this new trend now, where even with normal T levels, you know, people are claiming natural, but. Just constantly on TRT. Okay, but and, uh, it's true. Have you know, guys not seen on Instagram oh, no, and yeah. TikTok and, yeah, everyone and, is there. and YouTube? Everyone's natural, but but they, on TRT, they're not on on also they're on going gear. to a they're not on gear, but they're on uh, so they TRT. On TRT. So, so you yes. take so you take like superhuman or super like normal like or, like really high levels of TRT. So you have super levels of testosterone. Um, like that's the thing we aren't going Advesh, we aren't going super phys- physiological yeah, we're, not, we're yeah. not going super physiological so sure. yeah so our, our aim obviously and I think the aim of most medical professionals mm. with TRT is to keep your levels within the normal range so mm. higher than what it is to get you to pr- possibly even the higher upper limit of normal mm. where you're not experiencing the side effects but when the guys go and juice they want levels so like I mean the range now for, that we use is about 300 to 600 these guys are like sitting in 900,000 levels yeah. and persistently at that level. 1,500. Uh, yeah. Really? High, high things, mm. wow. yeah. So uh, that's essentially what we're looking at. But the question then comes in, you know, are we enabling and if we, are we enabling or creating a worse problem or are we helping people to do it safely? And back to the study that you uh, or the organization that you spoke about in Cape Town. In Portugal, what they've actually done with drugs, they've legalized everything. You can get anything you want. <laughs> steroids, you can get... Um, I think in India as well, sure. you can get steroids. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> no. I know no, But you probably can. can. <laughs> you probably can. I mean, yeah. everywhere you can get steroids. You but can get all these, these the, things. In anyway. Portugal, they fully legalized it. And, and, and the rationale for doing that is, so they've la- legalized everything. So everything is available and everything, mm. there's no taboo around it. They found that a lot of the time, these types of, whether it's steroids, whether it's uh, recreational drugs, they found that people, one, will seek these things out because there's a little bit of a taboo. Ooh, mm, I'm mm, doing something mm, naughty. Mm, 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 but when it's actually that taboo is taken off, the, like when, when, when nobody thinks of it as something that's the secret and ooh, we can't mm, do this, we're not uh, supposed to. It's like, ah, bro, everybody's like, doing like it. You're jumping mm, through hoops mm, to get mm, a certain so, thing. Like yeah. Mm. So there's one. That, so, so that's the first reason. The second reason is just like that organization, they give free needles, whatever. And what they found is when the people are coming for their needles, a lot of these people want help, but they don't know how to find it. Now, the Nyabe boy that's sitting in the street corner, he can't find help and there's no way he's getting to a doctor that's going to help him. Now, every month he comes for a needle and there's a doctor or a nurse, when he signs for it, they have to compulsory, they have to do a counseling session. So in that session, they say, listen, do you want to stop? We've got a center. And they've actually found that there's a decrease in number of addicts in the country because of that. Oh, yeah. So including that, it, it, over, over a five-year period, mm-hmm. they found an actual reduction because now all those previous drug users are now not sitting in a park getting high by themselves. They're coming there every month. And so there's always, every month, there's always a chance I can get better. Mm. I can improve. Okay, let me bring this. Of the 10 people that come, if you're getting one that's going into rehab, you're good. Yeah. So I think yeah. in the same way, I think it applies in this situation. If you're getting a large proportion of people that are coming to, to us for help or saying, yeah. I'm going to use, I'm going to use this thing. And you say, well, look, we can, we can help you optimize so we're not going to blast you with testosterone and get you in the thousand levels, thousand five hundred. Let's see if we push your levels to upper limit of normal, so where you're not experiencing high symptoms. That's I know about this. Isn't it like you got to cycle the stuff, right? Now, obviously, yeah. we don't. We're not. We don't really cycle. We don't TRT. know about the cycling. Mm. Yeah, but we don't really. Si- but like when they're juicing, then they blast their levels to a thousand five. Cycle. So, yeah. okay, let's say, for example, a guy comes, he's done um, two months, three months of this. What's your... Of TRT, what are, what are or not of TRT, he's been blasting, he's been hitting yeah. his levels. So what I wanted to come up with how, 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 how are we going to recorrect that? Like, 
what's the what's the stepwise process? Because he's obviously messed up yeah. that access we, yeah. we spoke about. How are we going to counteract that? Can I just mention so, on so the safety part? Because I just think people, are, guys who are using steroids will come to us and think, yeah, I'm going to do it safe with the doctor. Yes, we can guide you on those things that we can prevent. But there are things that we don't even know you have or can't prevent. We don't know if you're your heart arteries are going to spasm and you get a heart attack. Exactly. Or if your heart, you're going to have sudden cardiac death and your heart just stops and you mm -hmm. collapse. Because of the hyperviscosity. Exactly. So we don't know body. if your arteries are... And your lipid profile. Your lipid mm -hmm. profile. So we can give you medication to reduce your blood pressure, your cholesterol, but we can't stop your, your arteries from expanding and getting like aortic rupture where the large vessel of your heart ruptures and you bleed out to death so there are certain things that we just won't be able to help you with these things are dangerous possible outcomes that you mm. may be predisposed to but we can help you with those things that we can control mm. um, yeah. so there's no so, so, safe so way. like talking about just like realigning the hormone profile how would you start like so where would you start yeah. so uh, I mean the best thing would obviously to make sure that the patient stops right so that's I mean that's the first one and um, and assessing for withdrawal, because like any drug, there's withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna, if so you're what gonna would stop they generally experience if they're going through testosterone withdrawal? Uh, I mean, like normal withdrawal. I mean, depending on like Brandon's person. I mean, that person was taking what a gram a week. Yeah, a gram. I mean, that person was superhuman, right? Mm -hmm. So whatever he was taking it for, he'll start noticing a huge dip in that. For example, let's say this guy used to you know, take it just to lift, I don't know, whatever, 500 kilograms of, he's going to have problems with all of that stuff. He's going to have problems with sleep. He's going to have stress. He's going to have, you know, insomnia, like I said. Um, so you first assess for that. Are there any withdrawal symptoms? And if they are withdrawal symptoms, then you can't, you can't just chop it. Mm. Then you have to work with them mm. and, and, and taper it down. The reason why the patient would have presented, though, is because they would have stopped the stuff mm. and mm. now mm. are experiencing those side effects. So yeah. there's, there's ways also, we spoke about using medication that stimulates LH to make your testes produce its own testosterone again, since you're no longer mm. putting testosterone into your, into your buttock or mm. into mm. Your, to your arm. Yeah. You know, so trying to get your own body to make its own testosterone. But is there a point where your body will just shut down? You spoke about uh, when your testosterone, when your testicles shrink, because yeah. this patient I saw, his, testo his testicles actually had shrunk. Mm. And even shrinking, I mean, how do you, how do you, do, do we send patients for an ultrasound? Is no, he it? will tell you. I mean, you can even feel this is not a normal size. So when you examine testes. Yeah, but what's the normal size? Fish, is what I'm trying to ask. I mean, I know personally when I examine testes, mm. I just have this, you know, because you There's do it no all way. the time. There's no way. <laughs> no, no, no. What do you do? So you hold your own. Like, you like, like, so. you, you've held all our testes here <laughs> in the same bowl. <laughs> It's so I guess thing. it's like okay. Wait, so let Vish tell us about testicular it, size. Just in, yes. just quickly tell us a little bit because different things can affect obviously size, varicose, seals, um, previous infection. But if the guy says to you, "My tubes. testicles have shrunken," that's, so again, it's it's that's subject. you know what were they before? You know, has it shrunk from before till now? Mm. Um, you know, or were they always like this? Um, but again, like radiologically. I mean, clinically, you could have obviously, but, but radiologically think, on an ultrasound. I mean, if a guy says to have been using a gram a week for for three years nonstop, and he says now my testicles have shrunk, obviously, as a doctor, you put the two together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of no, course. No, no. Don't need to. Of course, the like, reason, like, the like why I'm asking sound. about this, it's because I mean, everyone says this, you know. Ah, your testicles will shrink. Yeah. But then, I mean, have you never asked yourself? Oh, yes, testicles shrink. I mean, I, I mean, I might think my testicles have shrunk, or you might think your testicles but they have don't shrunk. Do they it, shrink normally? No. Do they actually? You know, do, when they shrink, do we have numbers? Do we send these patients for ultrasound? <laughs> there is and, volume, and isn't there? Are they, aren't there better ways of checking? Ultrasound. Yeah. You mm. can measure. But I think... Those, um, uh, those beads. But I'm sure measuring test levels and just seeing that... Yeah. I mean, so again, you can, have, you can have like... Or like... Um, mm. Well, like smaller testes or something, but normal testosterone mm. levels, yeah. uh, for example. Um, yeah, so... You may have someone who have who has like large but testes, but, you, but 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 it's not my producing. My testes have halved in size because mm. guys think you all know as you're sitting here, you know how big your your balls are. No, but <laughs> so <laughs> if tomorrow you wake up and your balls are half the size and flakes, you're gonna know that my no, balls no. have shrunk. <laughs> another one. Just, so, so 
So, and obviously, so these are both must shrink so, at the same so time. So it's not just that. It's, it's not like one. Also, what if one shrinks and the other stays so the same? It's not just. It's also the consistency and okay. yeah. Okay. The so if so if you have like like large testes but they're soft, it also means <laughs> that they. That's also a problem. Wait, but is that something that TRT may do to you, or not TRT but like? obviously high you know super so even other basically um or like poorly functioning testicles so like testicular failure almost mm. you know you can have patients who have um, other medical comorbidities diabetes metabolic syndrome mm. um there are other things like hiv tb and stuff in which scenario you may have testicular failure okay. so okay. it's it's not just obviously volume but also like cons- the consistency mm. yeah yeah no, I mean that's that, that, that's interesting. So just quickly, you may have someone where you feel like a, a large testicle, but it could be hydrocele as well. Yeah, so. oh, it's cancer, hard testicle. <laughs> you know what's <laughs> cancer? <laughs> what, but what, the, what? the the same guy. That's a valid point, actually, mm. because you know you said he's obviously been injecting so often. You know mm. that's something that that can actually happen. You know, so I think it's it's wise that you did obviously do yeah. a. Uh, scrotal examination. See, man, I'm not just playing mm. with patients' balls. Yeah, I'm doing proper. Guys, just just yeah. one last question. So, if you see a 26 year old gent mm. who says, "Listen, I've made up my mind. I don't want kids. Um, can you guys give me TRT as a preventative measure? Uh, I'm married. Um, I can't use condoms in my marriage. So, uh, I mean, I heard you guys in your podcast saying that DHT blocks this, LH blocked." <laughs> why, why can't we use this as as a form of contraceptive? It is actually. It does actually. Yeah, yeah it's it? happening. Oh, using okay. it. Who so uses yeah. that? Who wants that? They make. Have you not heard of the me- was it the studies, medical so? male? Uh, it is in, yeah. um, castration. No, not castration. The male. The male. The male. The male what do you call it? Male contraceptive, male contraceptive pill. Yeah. Oh. oh, is it just testosterone? It's basically testosterone. <laughs> yeah. But, but then you're gonna. They're gonna have. You're gonna have all these side effects, surely. Yes, so, I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, females on. Well, females on contraception have side, side effects. Side effects. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, hey, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take my chances. I'll roll the dice. <laughs> well, with HIV in South Africa. So you have your normal testosterone, which it's is oral. This is yeah. oral testosterone. From oh, the, that's, from that's basically you, it. You obviously produce DHT okay. and estrogen as well. Mm, so mm, 25 minutes but the thing look the the, the 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 reason why most men come and ask us about their test levels and why they want it is because they're sexual dysfunction yeah mm. and i think mm. we've we've touched on the diabetes test and uh, yeah. uh, 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 erectile dysfunction and how that all ties in but nas i think you you want to say a Yes, so this is a little very, bit about that. This is very. I see. We see it all the time. It's very, very common. It's an, an elderly man, right, with low testosterone, in erectile dysfunction, and diabetes, mm. right. There's a stigma that people say that oh, you know, uh, so you need to fix your like I I hear it all the time like uh, fix your sh- diabetes and and your hypertension first before you think about correcting your erectile dysfunction, right? Mm. We treat them both at the same time, mm. okay treat your hypertension and diabetes and also medication for erectile dysfunction. Yes. But the underlying cause of all these things usually is low testosterone, right? Mm. So if there's something like, a, you know how you always always a triad in medicine. There's a Beck's triad, the Verkaus triad. Let's make one called the NASA's triad. NASA's right? <laughs> <laughs> triad. NASA's triad. <laughs> it's a person who has erectile dysfunction, low testosterone and diabetes. Yeah, so you have that triangle. Right. Testo- erectile dysfunction, diabetes. Yeah. Low, low testosterone. testosterone can make diabetes worse. How? Um, there's studies that show like it's metabol- metab- metabolism yeah. and all of that, right? It does happen. So um, if you improve your, if you increase testosterone levels, you can improve your diabetes and your glycemic control, right? Also it improves, improves erectile dysfunction with increased testosterone, right? High uh, uncontrolled diabetes causes microvascular changes, which also causes erectile dysfunction, right? Mm. And all of these both high diabetes and, and low T cause erectile dysfunction. So this this is thing we see all you the time. I publish this because some some uh, prof van der Walt or van der Merwe is listening. <laughs> van der Merwe's <laughs> triad. He's gonna po, He's gonna make this triad. I'm <laughs> telling you, you better capture this but thing. It, but it's it's like a it's an aggressive cycle. So low testosterone causes worse metabolic uh, yeah, abnormalities, yeah, worse, yeah. which is gonna worsen now your diabetes as well. You have more mm. um, like abdominal visceral fat as well, or mm. like abdominal waist circumference is larger mm. with that higher fat you're going to have higher estrogen levels and it's like further decreased um, so we can say you know, mm. t- TRT and um, uh, 
insulin resistance. Yeah. Oh, TRT yeah. and insulin yeah. resistance. Yeah. Which is Leading diabetes. To, yeah, exactly. Leading to erectile dysfunction. And yeah. that's why most yeah. people come to consult with us. Because the, the one time a man will come and ask for help, because, I mean, we know, studies have shown, men won't come and ask yeah, for help. Ask yeah. for help. Yeah. Men won't ask for help. They've got, uh, their chest pain has been going for two years. Yeah. Yep. The moment they can't get it up, the moment <laughs> they cannot last the long, is then they come to us. And then they come to us and then they start asking like ridiculous things, you know. And I don't think that the general, like I don't think men and people in general understand how sex works. Because guys will come and they're like, you know, I, I used to last five rounds mm. now. Mm. I, no, not <laughs> I used to last five rounds. I can never... I can't do five rounds. Yeah. I yeah. want to do five rounds. Yeah. How can you guys help me? What can you guys assist me with? So I think the mechanism of sex is important. We need to discuss what is sex? How how do you have how do you how does one person and another person get together and and do this this deed? Wait, what are you asking? <laughs> the mechan- no, 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 man. Look, we know. You find what is in, in Brendan's case, you have to write an exam, play a soccer match, <laughs> go to a party, find someone, and then do the deed. But um, I think it's important for us to to touch on how how what's the mechanism of sex? I think this man and a woman they've gotten together. We've met in the yeah. club. They they now together, or it's your wife, preferably, and <laughs> then you get together, and now what happens, Nas? This is actually not taught at all. I don't know where you guys are supposed to learn this is how this thing happens. This is not LO or whatever. But like <laughs> No, it took us six years in medical school <laughs> to learn class. No, we, we people do it in, like in LO. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. Okay. So people don't know what happens during sex. What does it mean? Erectile dysfunction. What does it mean when how like what actually happens, right? So for men, like okay, let's start from the beginning. There's like a sort of phases that happen, right? Okay. So like there's that pre- the pre-arousal phase where you start to uh, where you start to begin all this process, foreplay. right? Or we call foreplay. foreplay. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's so it's called foreplay. You foreplay. Together or when you're together? When you're together. Oh, okay. Right, so no, but I mean, foreplay, you can start, hey, baby, tonight. Yes, even before. Like, or is that so not before you even That's four? Decide? Before foreplay the play. is even that. Even yeah. when you just... So what about meeting? even before that where you tell yourself tonight I want a child? That's men's foreplay then. <laughs> You're telling yourself that. <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> getting yourself really. Self yeah, but that's, 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 that's also all, all the same thing. From Look the in your mind. From but the obviously beginning. like even, I mean, even uh, for, for, for a woman, like telling a woman, hey, this, this is what I want to do to you. And yeah. uh, what's this? Well, even it's a woman reading mind. a book yeah. can be foreplay. Reading an erotic book, watching erotic movies, whatever. Yeah. For so women and men, yeah. it's very different. Yeah. But, and and it's, it's far more on the female side. Foreplay is far more for the woman than it is for the man. Man doesn't need as much. Yeah. So we're not building arousal, it's foreplay. Then it starts to build and build and build, right? And now we start to have intercourse, right? So this uh-huh, is. Ah, but wait, before you intercourse, during the foreplay, at what point should a man expect that he's going to get an erection? And what happens to the woman during the foreplay? So, like, it happens, isn't it like a I sort think, of meme? I think this is testosterone dependent as yeah. well. Because when you're a kid, you have an erection. When you're just thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. when kid. you're just talking no, to a when girl, you're a teenager, you're teenager, yes, yes. when you're a teenager, you just think in your head, I, I'm gonna chow tonight. Yeah. As a, when? You're crying. As a teenager. <laughs> 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 huh? But then you have men who only sure. get an erection just before they're about to have actual yeah. penetrative sex. So I think it definitely varies yeah. for everyone. So yeah. Yeah. There's no, uh, there's but I mean, no in general, cuts. obviously, you should get an erection during four I mean, yeah. in, my, in, in our so, 20s, and if you say to me, like, I was about to get, have intercourse and I was still not hard, I mean, I look at you funny, man. What are you saying? Yeah. What are you talking yeah. about? Exactly. Yeah. Well, for example, what if you actually just didn't, were not attracted to the woman? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's also another thing. Yeah, it, it, it's never it's stopped a, you, Bree. Huh? Has it ever stopped? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 so, 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 so no, guys. guys. Yes, 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 yes. You're getting distracted here. <laughs> so yes, so so, 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 so there's a build up of arousal. Like, okay. Yeah, it's a build okay. up of arousal, build and at some point you should get an erection. Okay. Yeah. And that's the spectrum that happens when you get the erection. Yes. Yes. 
Okay. Not talk, uh, yeah, he's not gonna so, watch this. So I'm telling you, man. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to get the difference of <laughs> guys, guys. To the story. Uh, guys are cloudy. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, the different of phases basically. Wait, but like, it's look important. At the rates. Need, uh, people at home need to know. If I don't get erection at this point, is it a problem? Yes, you Actually, should get yes. in foreplay. Yes, you should get in erection but at it, some at the point. Beginning. But again, like, physiologically, I mean, it can be that it's normal with a certain person and not with another yes, person. Yeah. So. so so there's but you should get an erection before psych- the intercourse, like because there are some guys who are like, no, I try and put it in when I'm when I got when I'm flaccid, and I'm like, <laughs> yo, <laughs> man, that's not gonna work. So think about it as building arousal, right? Mm-hmm. If you put it in before you fully arouse, then it's not going to be a proper not, not a proper time to put it in, right? Or like even for for a woman. So let's say let's say like women need more foreplay. Have you heard about? Yes, that, of right? course. Yeah. So you can't just put it in early, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to get to a certain point of arousal before you have intercourse. Right? And and also just touch on why is that that women need that extra foreplay? I think they're just more uh, <laughs> emotional. We'll get a woman to address these issues. Let's just talk about this. Okay, okay, fine. Right? Carry on. <laughs> so we're just weak people. We're building arousal, right? And we get to the point where we're sufficiently aroused enough to have a maintain an erection and also she's Wet enough or but, but to yes, lubricated to enough. enough. To use the medical to terms, okay. And maintain an erection is testosterone dependent as well. Okay, yeah. apart from vascular as well, it's yes. also dependent on, yeah. on your testosterone. Test. It's much yeah. easier when you're younger, and then it gets yeah. worse as you get older. Yeah. yeah. So it just goes downhill. Downhill. <laughs> so we get <laughs> to that point that. of where sufficiently aroused, right? Then you then you have actual intercourse, right? Intercourse, you increase the arousal to a higher rate than foreplay, right? So we can talk about uh, which are the um, erogenous zones, right? So let's say for a woman, it would be like her breasts, her neck, her thighs, right? These are all the things you must be stimulating to increase arousal, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of guys I found out don't know what is clitoris. Do you guys know what the clitoris sure. is? Well, before you talk about the clitoris, because it's a gentleman's clinic, why is, where's the man's erogenous zones? Be honest. Again, I'm going to say... <laughs> be I'm honest, gonna, I'm, think again, it's I'm going to say it's testosterone dependent. When you're in your... Late teens, twenties, you don't need to be touched anyway. Yeah, yeah. you are just, <laughs> yes, just of course, exactly, yeah. of but course, of course. As as age goes and t- testosterone declines and life happens and you get also um, tolerance to these things. What do you mean? What do you mean tolerance? <laughs> tolerance to sex, to, the, to a person, or to, to a sex. person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to open another. Person. I don't want to open another can <laughs> of worms, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> 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 Mr. Okay. Cool guy himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but okay. yeah, <laughs> look, yeah, yeah, you yeah, need to. <laughs> so, so if things are not, not so if, things, if things may need to be like spiced up or something, yeah, you got What you're just trying to okay, say. but a man's where's the man's say, erogenous zones? Because let me I tell you something. Uh, okay, in right. med school, they taught us that a man's G spot no, is no, in. No, 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 that's a lie. That's a lie. It's not. Engage those things. Men for men, it's tip of penis. Up to the base of pe- base of penis. It's penis. It's just penis. <laughs> There's no <laughs> prostate, prostate. Nothing. No. Not prostate. Yeah, prostate, prostate. Prostate is not a. So another thing where you stick a finger in and tickle in the front. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. No. Okay. But actually, I think if you move. You see, once you start getting perineum, yeah. then Show there's you, there's something wrong now. That's You're starting to get stimulation beyond. But that there's also like even the scrotum, okay. the scrotum. There's also yeah. erogenous zones. No, but guys, but homosexual guys will also tell you that they do get pleasure from prostate and perineum and and those. But I think it's also just the nerve endings around the anus. Yeah, yes. that's most likely. Yes. Tell us, the nerve endings. Where's the, that the I know nerve endings? Of, eh? This what about like even the scrotum? The scrotum is a yeah. sensitive part. It's the skin, basically. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So the same as as nipple. There's also has nerve endings. The mm. anus has nerve endings. Mm. So whether that's um, designed, created, developed, or evolved to yeah. be a sexual erogenous zone, mm. we not to say. Mm. Culturally and <laughs> historically, that's not an erogenous zone. <laughs> yeah. But people would differ. Yeah, um, I think, I th- yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's very time people, yeah. It is, you know, yeah. Subjective. For every man, it's different, but essentially it's just the genitalia yeah. for us. Yeah. 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 Effectively, right? Okay. For women, it's all those places. Okay, but continue. So now okay. we're aroused, we're ready. We are aroused, and then, okay, so then we get, we get to the point of pure arousal, intercourse, right? And you keep building that arousal until you reach the point of the climax of orgasm, right? <laughs> what? You keep yeah. building arousal? Wait, without any, no, just continue, um, continue. Else. <laughs> <laughs> with, with continue, no, yeah. continue. With stimulation, yeah. with stimulation okay. you get to the point of climax, right? And that's when... So do all of these 
erogenous areas need to be stimulated or is it one or is it two or is it there? Can I, can so obviously does it have to be a necessary? I, yeah. So like for women, it's mostly clitoris, right? Or in the, va- in the uh, vaginal, right? Clitoris? What is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so most of us have no idea what no, that thing true. is. You'll be Lots surprised. 100%. Know. No, I, I no, agree. No, it's true. I agree. It is so actually that's what true. I'm saying. That's important know. like as part of... Because we're talking some, about how we... Some women actually also just also don't know that in the About vagina there's a vagina and there's a urethra yes and the clitoris, clitoris. Yeah, you'd be surprised yeah. some nurses don't know how to put a catheter in those things because they yeah, don't know that true. there's two different things yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But so um, I mean it's not it's so, very so, common that even women don't understand the anatomy so Nas what is the clitoris so the, there's labia right yeah that's those the, the, the lips the lips right in between the lips Lipsal at the top translation yes yeah in, at the top edge Right, yeah. there's going to be like a bean-shaped thing. Yeah, that is clitoris. It looks like you know one of those boxing. The <laughs> is that what flicking the bean means? <laughs> yeah. Hey. That, yes. I you don't flicking the no, bean. I don't buy. I don't just do that. No. Not not beating the meat. Okay. Flicking so the bean. So you said <laughs> flicking the bean. You said, yeah. You said, the bean. Uh, you said you reached the peak and then. Said DJ. Yeah. So okay, we we mentioned how to get there, right? So there's there's uh, most women actually get stimulation from the clitoris. Right, so guys don't know where that is. Women never get orgasm. They don't know what they never yeah. satisfied. Yeah. Right, so try and stimulate that as much as possible. Right, and then if you prior yeah, to but wait, no, but can, no, we just, can we address more of the mainly? Because then we can get a woman to tell us. You yeah, know, about this. Yeah, yeah, we, we should talk a little bit, a lot more about that. Should, should but we, yes, we, it is important. I think we can even do a poll on our site. You know, um, mm. if the viewers want to see. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Next on our you know, podcast, we can get a sexologist. Yeah, we can get yeah, a lady to come in. But and there's a saying that you don't you don't ask a fisherman how to you don't ask the fish how to catch fish. You ask the fisherman. The fisherman don't know what the fish looks like. What if the fisherman is not actually catching fish? He's just that's just his title. He's just going out to the sea. He's just in the boat, just just. Yeah, wandering aimlessly, so, but look, uh, because with the gents training, let's talk about how, uh, what it is for man. What 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 does a man experience during sex? So now, is there stimulation, stimulation, stimulation? Right. And it's important for us to d- uh, determine. This, yes, yeah, yeah. So define this because we have a lot of people consulting for erectile dysfunction, which yeah. you've addressed. At yeah. which point premature you need to get, and then premature ejaculation now. Okay, reaching that arousal. So at the point of arousal, you've you've now had so much time of arousal, and once you if you can't get an erection, that's that's erectile dysfunction. Yeah. So you still you don't have in, in, uh, um, you don't, you're not hard enough to go in, right? Or you're not hard enough to stay in, right? Yeah. That's erectile dysfunction. Premature ejaculation would be that you are you are you do have a sufficient erection. Mm-hmm. Then when she, once you go in, you don't last long enough to stimu- to satisfy her. Or like yourself. the time. It's the time. What, what like mm-hmm. what? So a few minutes. Some people say two minute men, but exactly. is it two minutes? Is it five no, minutes? So is studies, it ten? It's most five minutes. studies is uh, five minutes. four to six minutes. Is the average of a man yeah, of like an average normal. man? Yes, yeah. four yeah. to From six penetration minutes. till ejaculation. Yeah, so it's okay. called the yeah. So that's that's ejaculatory average. latency time. Yeah. So that's average. Average. Can you imagine yeah. doing this for an hour? No, which is what man. some of our patients think. You can just be doing this. For <laughs> an hour. I mean, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and, but these guys who, who, say, who swear People who on their swear, mother that yo. they go 45 yeah. minutes non-stop, our, one hour. Naturally, no performance all night. <laughs> all night, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, all night no, long. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure at the early stages they used to because... Or well, they use um, medication. And now they've no, hit like, like... Just naturally. Because the thing is, obviously with, with training... Training. Oh, training. experience. Okay. Let me say that. Tolerance. Uh, Toler- <laughs> the tolerance <laughs> level goes up. Right. You, you have better control. Of your orgasm, yes, so you yes, can then yes. prolong the orgasm. Mm. You get to a like a, almost close to the peak, and then you shut then yourself you down control. again. Is that a, there's you, a, so that, a word that then prolongs for it. the time. But it's that's called, a mental um, thing. Yes. It's called something. It's a mental thing, though. Mm. While you're mm. still thinking about the word, but it's a mm. mental so, thing. So, so it's that, and you need to involve your partner a lot in it as well. Mm. Eh? That's mm. what I teach a lot of men. But, be, but before we go too much into that, so now you've reached climax. We're yeah. done. It's actually a name. The man is done. Yeah. So now you get <laughs> now you get to the part of refractory period, mm. right? Yeah. No matter what stimulation you do at this time, you cannot get an erection again, and that's completely normal. There's no is you physically cannot have an erection. So, it this period lasts like um, it depends on your age. So it can be a few thirty minutes when you're younger, and it can go hours, maybe even to another day, 
for testosterone dependent testosterone mm. dependent uh, refractory period people think that like i've seen this happens like patients will come and say i can i last one round right then i have this period where i can't get erection again i have erectile dysfunction that's not erectile dysfunction yeah. mm. so it's usually it's because you're in a refractory period and what do you do you just wait it's going to come back mm. it's not TRT you don't need mm. TRT you don't need mention like um nervous system yeah. uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic because um, there's guys also who swear that they yeah, can go swear five they're going 5 6 rounds so if that happens it's believe. it's because of it's not like one round where they last like some people say they last 45 or, or like many hours right it's usually not one like all night right it's not usually one round it's it's multiple rounds and for a woman who who can say that oh she had this experience It's <laughs> it's usually like it's usually like the um, like uh, a, a woman with experience a lot of foreplay during that time or s- there'll be something else happening right that isn't dependent on the man so then for her she'd experience all night but for men it'd be separate instances yeah, and it's also normal for women not to exp- you know some women just cannot reach their orgasm or they haven't mm, figured out what I- Can stimulation they require can but can ejaculate 5 6 times a night in a, in a 12 potentially it, it can happen can. potentially Yo, with enough let me tell let me tell you let me tell you that let me tell that how how does it happen okay uh, you go if you first have a of all refractory period as well but even if it's a longer you can just mm-hmm. wait until yeah, yeah. like What's if it's coming a, out after round 3 Uh, There's nothing left. It, yeah, it can it can not come. <laughs> it can you can decrease it. Right? So, uh, <laughs> bone marrow at that point. <laughs> bone marrow is empty. It takes a empty. <laughs> <It's laughs> <an empty. laughs> But some guys are like I'll still keep going. I I don't care as long as I But can get that feeling at the end. Yeah. At some point. Maybe. I don't know. I think yeah, you won't want to. Like, you won't like, want to. And she won't want to. Time to achieve. That's the thing. But it can happen. But the thing we need that the the mindset we need to change is that normal is one round. two rounds mm. i mean even if it lasts till tomorrow yeah. that's normal i mean don't feel like less of a man if you can only go one round and you have to sleep for six hours and then you can only go another round there's after. nothing wrong with that there's i think i think obviously that. some so you know for for a lot of the men that consult us they have an, a perception of themselves 10 20 years ago and now and, also and so women, now the things have changed drastically they're like oh i need to get back to that on men as well i mean yeah there are women that are like no we need to We need we I yeah. want to be satisfied. So if you if you can't make me orgasm in round one, I want you to try by round three maybe. And then the guy's like, it's round three. Mm. He's yeah. been struggling and then he for yeah. hours to try and get an yeah. erection for round one. <laughs> yeah, and now <laughs> you know, now he's struggling. Now but he's uh, struggling. but but uh, to in, to close off the conversation, um, let's talk about what can go wrong during sex. What what can go wrong? We've talked about STIs. not the eyes. <laughs> STI. STI that's a big one. Yeah, <laughs> that can STI. things can go STI. very wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So what what can go wrong during sex? Uh, he spoke about the st- <clears throat> stuff that can go wrong prior to so premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction. But what um, what can go wrong? The one thing that I I, I was suggesting that we talk about is um, you know, woman is on top. Oh my goodness! I can. So actually, yeah, yeah. And she comes down, and it do- <laughs> it doesn't. How do I put this? It doesn't go smoothly back in, so she presses down and it hits your your her pubic bone, basically pushes on your penis, hits your pubic bone, and you get Ouch. a fractured penis. So I've I've uh, consulted someone um, who said who explained that to me. Yeah. But obviously the the biggest thing that made me worry about him is he says that when she went down on his penis. He heard a sound like a snapping sound, <laughs> yeah, like a bumping sound. But when I examined his Shucks. penis, obviously he was in a lot of pain. And he mm. says when he gets an erection, it's painful, mm. but it wasn't deformed. It wasn't deformed even on examination, and it wasn't tender. But he said when he gets an erection, it's sore. And then subsequently, it it, it became fine. So maybe I mean it could have also maybe not been that. Um, so penile fracture is it's not actually a fracture of a bone. Mm. Well. Bone. Yeah, because we we but, I mean, uh, commonly we think that <laughs> fracture yeah. means bone, bone. <laughs> but it's it's essentially a tear in your corpora cavernosum, which is the two rods at the top of the penis. Okay. The muscle, mm. yeah. Um, it's a sponge, sponge basically. Yeah, it's it's sinusoidal. Uh, okay, so, so blood falls blood in that. Blood falls sponge. So essentially, what Till described, so obviously, generally, it's um, your partner on top comes down abnormally, and then 
the penis bends in an abnormal position. So it has to be an erect penis and bends basically hits on the pubic bone of the person. Um, generally, you have, generally, I mean, you would only expect it to be on one side because if it bends, it bends on one side. Um, and then again, snap backwards, like. So at at any any angle, you know, yeah, you, per se. You heard it's like a snap. Like so that sound. that is normally you, you, we what, would hear like you, a pop oh, or okay, like a pop, eh? Yeah. Um, and funny enough, actually, when they do present to the casualty, the classical image or that you would notice is actually um, what is that? It's an eggplant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The eggplant. It it's is like very it's, swollen, it's literally, bruised. Literally oh. an eggplant. The way it's shaped, the way it's swollen. So it could have been that his was not like a complete penile fracture. Maybe yeah. just a small tear that wasn't like... So you know, the reason why... So obviously know. the blood now, um, ex- well, extravasates out of that corpora cavernosum into the subcutaneous tissue, which causes an, a swelling on one side, wherever the fracture is, okay. um, and basically causes that, that eggplant deformity per se. Mm. I see. Yeah. I see. So the treatment is obviously surgical intervention. It does it need to be soon or does that develop into as, as an emergency? Okay. So if you don't, the thing is, I mean, the blood will continuously just leak out. You wouldn't be able to get an erection. So think of it as like... So like if you are aroused, you just get... So think blood. of it as like a, for example, like a, a tear in like a balloon or something. So as the blood goes in, oh. it just leaks out, you know? Oh. Um, obviously... It could be over time, you know, maybe uh, if you don't have an erection, the tissues could heal with fibrosis and things like that. But again, you know, as if you obviously go into theater for repair, um, so you can you can end you, up with pyronies. If you hear a snapping sound during sex, go straight to the emergency. Straight to the casualty. Now, what other, what other th- things can go wrong during sex? So I once saw a guy who said, um, uh, he, he well, he basically presented and said to me that he... He's noticed that he's now developed these funny little sort of sores on his penis. And obviously, I mean, I thought it's mm. probably a sexually transmitted infection. But then uh, when I investigated further, I found out that, you know, this guy's had these for a long time. Uh, they've been treated before. Um, unfortunately, I mean, he was educated enough to tell me what they gave. <clears throat> so I knew they covered for a sexually it's, transmitted yeah, infection. Yeah. But he still had them. Yeah, he was like, they don't change size, they're just there, and I don't know what's going on. Are these, are these warts? I mean, can, can, mm. can that be something we, we, you get post mm. coito? What are these things? It's like these, uh, I mean, there's a term for it. Which, what, what's the what term? What was like that, Nas? Pimples. Papules. 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 Oh, penile papules. Penile papules. <laughs> penile papules. Pearly penile papules. Pearly penile papules. Pearly penile papules. Where do you find them? On the head. On the head of the, like on the glands on the edge. Pearly penile papules. Yeah, we'll put an image up here. Pearly penile papules. Those are normal. Yeah. Right? yeah. Those yeah. are just they, normal. They're normal. They're not. Yeah. Actually, just something off note as well that you mentioned post coital or obviously during intercourse. Things that can obviously happen acutely or at the time can be a tear in the frenulum or a tear in the foreskin. Yeah. So you yeah. tear your foreskin. So it's obviously for the for, for, for uncircumcised yes, bodies, which we don't know about. <laughs> we don't know <laughs> these problems. Those, but. Yeah, but tell us. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, uh, I have seen people who, you know, they give you the history and this is what happened. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, if things were too rough or, you know, if they've had, if they have a tight foreskin for per, per se and, you know, at another situation they may, you know, they can be at risk for phimosis or paraphimosis as well. And if the foreskin gets retracted back very traumatically, it can uh, cause a tear. Okay. Generally at, at the frenulum, which is um, basically at the, the ventral aspect, so at the, the bottom part. So it's the attachment of the foreskin mm-hmm. to, the, to the glance. Yeah. At, at the urethra side. Yeah, on that note. Yeah, on that note, I think we've, we've covered enough uh, on what can go wrong and what can go right during mm, sex. Mm, um, mm. We've touched on low testosterone. We've touch, oh, yeah. touched on uh, juicing and how we can help you do it in a more safer manner mm-hmm. without you damaging yourself irreparably. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've shared some of our own experiences. And that's what we like to do here at the Gents Clinic Podcast. So thank you for joining us for another episode of the Gents Clinic Podcast. Uh, I'm Dr. Sohail Essa. Dr. Brendan Matthews signing out. 
Dr. Nassim Sharif. Dr. Tlantla Bilagazi. Dr. Vishen Naidu. And that's been our episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Gents Clinic Podcast. See you guys next week. <laughs>